Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, The Hungry Gamer is back with another game review. And today, we're talking about Scram, designed by Ted Auspich and published by Bezier Games. Now, before I get started, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles, because if I make any mistakes in the rules overview, that is where you will find the corrections. Now, what Scram is, this is a team game in which you are trying to get all of the critters out of your campsites. Now, I say it's a team game. It is not a cooperative game in that you are usually playing either two on two or two on two on two, though there is a variant for one versus two as well. Though you'll notice I only have basically set up for one team. If this was an actual game, there would be at least another player here and another player here who would also be on the team. And so what this game is, this is kind of a card shedding game where you'll be trying to get rid of all the cards out of your tableau. And eventually you'll have a few enough cards where you're allowed to say scram. And then after one more round, whatever team has the lowest score, which is based on the numbers on the cards, they will be the winner of that round. You play three or four rounds and whoever has the lowest score at the end will be the winner of the entire game. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to jump ahead to my final thoughts, then you want to go to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's quickly talk about how this game is played. And it is very simple. On your turn, you will either take the card that is face up from the discard pile or the card from the top of the deck. Now, just to show you how it works, we'll just assume that I'm going to take this card right here and I get to then place it into my tableau. Now, since the card I picked up face up, it goes into my tableau face up. So let's say I wanted to replace this card here. I could do that. And then I would take this card and flip it back over and put it in this card pile. But just for the sake of argument, we'll just say I will replace this card right here. And now that goes into the discard pile. Then this player over here would go and then it will be back to my teammate. And then they, they will say, will draw the top card of the deck here. And they'll look at it and they'll say, ooh, that's a four, that's pretty darn good. And so they clearly want to keep that because four obviously is better than any of the numbers that they can see so far. And they don't know what these are in theory. And so we'll say they're gonna keep that and they're going to replace this 11. Now here's the fun thing, because they replaced the 11, then their teammate over here is also allowed to replace their 11s. And just for kicks, we're going to say that this player has been using some various powers, and they're pretty sure that this card here is also an 11. So they're going to push that card forward as well. We'll push those two. We'll flip it over, and we find it's the wild. So that means all of these are 11s, and all of these cards would then be discarded into the discard pile like so. And just like that, this team is down to three cards and four cards from their original five. And of course, this player would go, then come back over here. And this time we're going to say, we're going to draw this card and we're going to use this power. This power is view two cards and you may exchange them. Now, when it says you may view cards, that means something face down, you are going to look at it and then put it back face down. So in this case, we'll just say, we're going to look at this card here, which is a 13, that's not very good. And another card. Now, I could even look at the top card on the deck here. I could look at one of these other players' cards. And just for the sake of argument, we will look at this one right here. And that's a 12. And so, sure, we're just going to go ahead and exchange them. And so now I know that there's a 13 there, and there is a 12 right here. And we will continue around, gets back over here, and they're going to do the same thing. And they're going to draw this card. And this card says, place this card face up in front of you. So they would take it and place it in front of them, and then they would discard two cards. And so, we'll say they will discard this card, like that, and then they could discard, again, any other card around the board, be it theirs or the other teams, and we'll just say they'll discard this one right here. And, again, this player would go, and now we've come here, and I have zero, one, or two cards, so I could call Scram. So I will call Scram, this player gets a turn, this player gets a turn, this player gets a turn, then we would all flip all of our cards. Wow, that's really bad with a 24 there. And over here we have 8, 12, 18, 27 for a total of 49 points, which is a very, very bad score, but you get the idea of how it works. And again, as a reminder, I was just showing you one team's kinds of actions. So that's mostly how this game is played. So what do I like about this game? First off, as I say so very often, it is small, it is compact, it's really inexpensive also, 
But for that tiny amount of rules, that tiny amount of space on your shelf, you're getting a lot of game there. And I love that about this game. I, I really like this game. I think in its simplicity, there is just enough strategy, just enough teamwork that you have when you play that really makes this game something that I want to pretty much always have in my bag to play with people when we have four or six. You don't have to play it at six very often, let's be real, because how often do you have a game night with six? That's kind of a weird number, but it does happen every now and then. And so I, I really like that. I like the way that each card you flip over, if it is a higher value card, one you're probably not going to want to keep, it has a power on it. And I really love the way the powers work that you're able to interact with any card on the table, be it the top of the deck, your, your teammates, an opponent. I love that about the game. I think that is very, very clever the way that works. And then I also really like the pressure that you're on when you call Scram, because I think it's a little bit over half the time I've played that the person who called Scram wound up succeeding. And it's so important, because if you blow it, you're getting an extra 10 points. And in all the games I've played so far, 10 points really will make a difference. And so there's that lovely pressure of trying to figure out when do you do this? And there's a little bit of push your luck in it because you know the other players are probably going to be pulling off the top of the deck and there's that skunk in there. There's something in there that might just ruin it for you. And I think that also just really works well. So what are my quibbles with the game? First thing is you really need four or six. I've played the three player version and it's satisfying. It's fun, but it's nowhere near as fun as it is when you're playing four or six. I think the three player variant is really good to have when you're teaching other people. And I was able to teach some people at a recent convention that I was at, and it worked really well. I was just able to set up myself with one, and then I was able to really pay attention to what they were doing and help them figure out the best strategies to use. <laughs> the best strategies to use, you know what I mean. But overall, you really got to have those specific player counts to make this game really shine, and that's going to actually limit the amount of time it gets to the table, I think. And the only other thing I'll say is, there's a little bit of weirdness to the rule set itself. The idea of you're throwing away your card, but if you can figure out what the other player's cards are, you know they have something upside down, there's the memory element to it, and all of that, it just is different from so many other games that you're playing, and usually when you're playing games with a partner across the table, it's usually a trick-taking type of game, so it's just all very, very foreign. And so what that means is, for the type of player that likes this type of game, again, usually that's going to be a trick-taker, it means there's a little bit of a foreign feeling to the game, which might take a minute for you to get used to. But there you have it, folks. That is Scram. This is one that I am just so very pleased that when I was chatting with Bezier Games at Origins, they said, hey, you want to try this thing out? And they sent me home with a copy because I really like this game. It was one of my top games of Origins, and I stand by it. I just think this is a very good, small box, small price, small footprint game. And this is probably one that I'm just always going to have in my backpack. It's just that good of a small box game, and I'm very, very pleased with it. So there you have it, folks. As always, if I've made any mistakes in the rules overview, please let me know in the comments with a timestamp so I can get that into the Klingon subtitles. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become a channel member. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.